welcome. Welcome, my friend, to the Beggars and Brawlers podcast. This is episode 34, recorded December 21st, the shortest day of the year, and my daughter's birthday. Very special day to me. Today, I've got another chapter of the Dragon Bard serial for you, as usual, and a little poll to see what story you want me to write next. It probably comes as no surprise to know that I've always loved world building <laughs> and that it's the thing that's drawn me to fantasy is this sense of wonder that we get from these imagined landscapes and magic and peoples and cultures. Um, I just love epic settings and I think growing up in a small town in North Dakota and eastern Montana while I was a kid made me really long for something more marvelous and just variety because it's a uh, it can get a little boring up there when you're a teenager. I like it now. Didn't always love it then. Um, so I think it was that wonder that drew me to travel to lots of places in my 20s and then drew me back to that love I found for fantasy when I was a kid growing up in those towns in getting to imagine my own worlds. It's truly one of my joys in writing fiction. And as you know, if you've been listening to the podcast, I really can't write a story without knowing the world really well first. Um, I tried to write the Dragon Bard serial last June, thinking it'd just be a light, easy story, and kept hitting roadblock after roadblock until I was like, okay, I just have to figure out what dragons are and what this world is in a much deeper way than I have. And as soon as I did that, I could get into it. That being said, I... Now, of course, this taken to an extreme can be what we call world builder's disease, where you have to plot every little detail and know every little corner of every culture and chart out the typography and the languages and all of that before you can finally write a word. Uh, Tolkien was famous for having this disease. And as much as I love setting and love imagining that stuff, I don't have what you call plotter's disease, uh, which is that... I start sketching the world and I get really into it and the deeper I get into the history and the magic and like the secret things that are happening behind the scenes, the more and more stories start to come into my brain until the one that I'm planning on, I just can't wait any longer and I have to start writing it even though I don't know everything about the world. This has turned out to be something of a blessing when I'm writing these longer series because it gives me something new to imagine and explore before I write a sequel versus kind of just knowing everything and then writing it out, which is the thing that uh, panthers hate about the plotting method of writing is that like, if you plan the story beforehand, then there's no spontaneity. And as you know, I fall somewhere in between those two. And I guess I do with my world building too, because I need to know the place where it's happening and everything that's relevant to the story. But it's really nice to leave some corners of the world unexplored. Um, like in the Tidecaller Chronicles, I knew Saray super well, and I knew that there were other cultures, enough to kind of describe them, but no main characters and almost no speaking characters in that first book are from any other culture. And that was intentional, because I, I wanted to leave that open for me to explore in the next book. And then in Witch of Wealth and Ruin, book two, I got to explore this whole other city and figure out what the magic system was like and what these people are like. And it was a ton of fun, and because I had the space to do that city and that culture really thoroughly, I think I got a lot deeper in, and I ended up, um, well, I really like telling that story, and people have liked the book, so I think it was good. Um, now, in book three, having explored two places and starting to get more of a international or multicultural cast, I find myself uh, sketching out more and more of the world, and... This is where the real plotter's disease comes in, because yes, I can't just world build forever. Eventually the story starts demanding that I tell it, but the bigger and deeper that I build these worlds, the more and more stories that I want to write in them. And it makes me totally understand why some authors just end up playing in the same sandbox their whole life and writing spin-off series and sequels to sequels and whatever, all set in this one place, because the deeper you imagine it, and then if you go forwards and backwards in time, there's just so much to write about any setting. Um, but because I love world building, I don't think I'll ever do that. I want to, you know, imagine fully different places. And uh, it might be that all my all my settings are connected in some way, but we haven't gotten there yet. Um, but this plotter's disease is something that I also struggle with because I have so many stories that I want to write. Like in the Empire of Resonance Saga, which I haven't written in for a few years, there are so many stories, especially from the past of it and looking forward in the future. That would be so cool to write. And it just 
don't have the hours in my life to write all of them. And so I'm always left with like, okay, of all these cool ideas, which is the one that I actually want to or actually have time to write? And occasionally I need to think about which one should I write because some of them might be uh, way too geeky or specific for people to actually read. And so I've got some of those coming up as I get close to the end of book three, Rebel of Riddle and Woe. And they've been rattling around in my head and I thought, well, why don't I rattle them out onto the podcast and see if any of them catch your eye or ear as it is. So I'm going to tell you three of them that have come up and uh, there'll be a link in the show notes to a poll. And if you want to tell me which one of these would make the coolest short story or novella or novel, um, click on the poll and let me know. So here are three options. One is the origin story of Akif Day, a character that we meet just kind of briefly in book two, but he's from Bamani, this like feudal jungle. It's not a state because it's a bunch of warring fiefdoms um, south of Saray. And uh, I had to start to sketch out their magic system in order to understand him and, and who he is and where he's from. And it's so cool that I'm just kind of dying to write a book about it, uh, about this honor-based magic system where if you become legendary enough, you essentially can't die. And they have this whole system of like tattooing stories onto their bodies and your power grows as your like reputation grows. So bards are also a really important thing because they're the ones who disseminate these legends um, throughout the warring fiefdoms. And uh, Akifte in particular has a really cool origin story that involves that magic and lots of betrayal. So I think that story would be super cool to write. Another one is more of a like side story or behind the scenes story of Anon who disappears for a little bit of book two and does important stuff off screen that we never really find out about. There's a little hint of it in the epilogue, but um, I would love to tell a story from his perspective because he's such a funny person. It'd be really fun to be in his head. And I think there are a lot of hijinks that went on in uh, those escapades that we weren't part of uh, in the background of book two. So I kind of want to tell that story of the two like epic heists that he pulls off and what he does with his freedom after thinking that he's going to die in the gladiator arena and then suddenly getting out. <laughs> There's just, I think that one would be a lot of fun to write. Um, and the third one is exploring this idea that I came up with because even in Saray, we were focused on the temple and the other magical faction in that city, the Therakins Guild. I didn't delve that deeply into their magic, and I've had to in book three for reasons, for spoilery reasons. Um, and I came up with this idea of a blood seeker, which is a Therakin who's trained in their healing powers, but also trained in how to subvert them to um, not exactly be an assassin, but to sneak into places and covertly gather the blood of important people. Because Therakins, once they have the blood of someone, then they have uh, power over them in a lot of ways, and they can kind of like spy on them in particular ways that you'll be familiar with if you've read the books. Um, and I just think that this idea is super cool, and I'd love to explore like the like the healer thief assassin. <laughs> um, perspective on the world and I'm sure that there's a cool story that could come from that as she breaks into like a highly guarded compound to steal someone's blood maybe one of these powerful amaranths in Duran maybe this is a backstory of Panewa there's a lot of possibilities but I just think that that magic would be fun to explore and that um, pulling off heists like that again would make a really fun story I think most of these are probably novella length um, and I I want to write a couple novellas in this world just to have floating out there so people can grab them and if they like them, uh, start reading the actual books. But anyway, if any of those in particular sound cool, there is a link in the show notes and you can tell me which one you want to read. In the meantime, I do have my other side project, The Dragon Bard, we're calling it for now. Um, and I got a new chapter for you. As usual, this is, let's see, this is chapter 10 called The Frost Hits. And uh, it'll have some spoilers if you haven't read the other ones. I'm not reading the full chapters out because I still am going to revise them, and probably a lot will change before the final draft of the book. And only after that's done do I want to take the life hours that it, it requires to do a really good reading of them. <laughs> so I'm going to give you kind of a bad off-the-cuff reading of the first part of chapter 10, but it will be kind of spoilery if you haven't read the previous ones. There's a link in the show notes to go read all of those if you haven't, and it'll take you to the full text of this chapter two, because we'll just read the first part of it. Um, but with those warnings aside, 
I give you chapter 10 of the Dragon Bard serial, The Frost Hits. Kantala was up before dawn, moving quietly in the ring light to check the dragons, get water boiling, and try to talk to Galsy. Just a little fire, he said, soothingly, running his hand up the inner part of her neck where she liked to be scratched. Just enough to convince her you understand. No one believes us, Gale. She shifted, tail scales clicking against her thigh. Khan sighed. I know you don't care, but I do. It could change so much for you, for both of us. She flicked her lids, the dragon equivalent of rolling her eyes. Just give it a try, okay? I don't want to look like an idiot in front of Rena. He had a sinking feeling how much Galsey cared about that, too. They shared a simple breakfast of dragon porridge, Rena making faces though he'd put double sugar in it. It'll help you, Contalo said. The blood is bitter, but it gives you a little bit of their ability. You know, to withstand the cold, to transfer it so you keep more heat. I know, she grimaced. I just, I don't think even a thermogen could keep warm out here. His eyebrows rose. Are those real? Everyone had heard stories of the Empire's magical assassins, with the ability to steal the heat right out of someone's body or the soul from their chest. Rena's smile was dark. They're real. So you're going to show me what your dragon can do? Or what? All right, just a little teaser for you of chapter 10. Um, crazy stuff happens in the end of it, and our lovable character, Contalo, is being himself throughout it. Uh, before I go, I wanted to tell you about our poll from last time uh, when I was talking about reading books before watching shows or vice versa. And uh, the results were pretty overwhelmingly in favor of reading the books first. That was 73%. Um, 18% said they don't even bother watching the show, even if they've read the books, which surprised me because I love it so much, even if the show is bad. Um, and literally 0% said that they watch the shows first and then read the books. So uh, I guess my revelation that it's better to read them first is nothing new. <laughs> In my own reading since the last podcast, I wrapped up Elder Race by Adrian Tchaikovsky, and it was awesome, as expected. And after considering a few other books for a little bit, I just had to read Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. I've expostulated at length about how much I love this series uh, when I was reading the other two books. Jade City, first book, had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I have never been one for watching gangster movies, but like, give me fantasy gangsters in a 1960s Hong Kong, and I'm so down. <laughs> uh, book two was good in the same way, but somehow really a tearjerker for me. I cried a lot reading that book, uh, which was strange but wonderful. And so far, Jade Legacy Book 3 is both of those things and more. And I love it, and you should read it. And I'm not going to say any more because I don't want you to have totally overblown expectations. But this is definitely one of the best series I've read in the last few years. It's amazing. Um, okay, so with that, I think I've talked long enough. I am going to get back to the last 30,000, or is it 40,000, <laughs> of Rebel of Riddle and Woe. Can't wait to bring that book to you. In the meantime, I hope that you are well and in the company of good books, as always. Till next time, read on. For more information on Levi Jacobs and his books, including the award-winning Tide Collar Chronicles, please visit www.levijacobs.com. Or for a free audiobook, only available to podcast listeners, go to www.levijacobs.com slash free. Thanks for listening and read on.